Barbie here with Broken Ground and today I want to talk to you about my top 10 lessons after 10 years on our homestead. So this growing season marks 10 years here. I can't believe the time has gone by so fast um, and bear with me because it is a long list um, but hopefully you'll be able to benefit from this um, in the implementation and design of your homestead. So here we go. I have a list because I can't remember 10 things. Um, so lesson number one is um, taking a year of observation. So I know everyone gets super excited uh, when uh, they first maybe get a property, purchase a property, and they want to start implementing straight away. And I was the same way. And I wish I would have actually taken a full year of the observation. Maybe I would have put in maybe a couple annual raised garden beds, but I would, would have held off on the fruit trees and the berry bushes for about a year. And the reason for that is the map is not the territory and seeing your site through the four seasons, observing the microclimates, um, knowing your neighbor, meeting your neighbors, knowing the context of where you live um, is super important and gives you a lot of information and makes you come up with a better design. So if I had to do it over again, I would actually take a year and not do much on my site. So that's my first lesson. The second lesson is I would have pruned my fruit trees uh, way earlier. Um, so early on in kind of the implementation, I threw in the fruit tree, well, I planted the fruit trees and the berry bushes and then got caught up in doing the herbaceous layer and other aspects of the, of the implementation plan. And I didn't really pay attention to pruning in those first few years, which are very critical. <laughs> so if I were to do it um, again, I would be paying attention to pruning those fruit trees earlier, especially in those first four years. And they're fine, but they would have had a nicer shape to them uh, if I would have started that earlier. So prune your trees earlier. Third lesson is that I would space out my fruit trees a little more. Um, they do have space, they do have adequate space, but I think I would put them a little bit farther apart. Um, it's hard to imagine when you get these small bare root fruit trees that they actually grow, but believe me, after 10 years, they have grown uh, significantly. And I feel like they could probably use a little bit more space as they continue to um, grow for the next few years. So be very conscious of the mature height and spread of your trees and your shrubs when you put them in and allow for adequate space. Trust that they are probably gonna grow um, as large as they are supposed to. So fourth lesson is I would have put more native plants in my food forest, in particular more uh, native herbaceous perennials. And so when I was implementing kind of the herbaceous layer, I don't think like the native plant craze had gotten so, um, so big and native plants weren't as readily available as far as I remember. And so I didn't put as many of them in my food forest. So if I had to do it over again, I'd put more native plants. As some of you know, my front yard now is almost exclusively na native plants, which is great, um, but I wish I would have put more in my food forest. Uh, number five in terms of my top 10 lessons is getting on top of the voles sooner. Um, so I think I had a little bit of magical thinking <laughs> when voles started becoming a problem. So when you start bringing compost in, um, straw, wood chip, all of those things of course are great habitat for voles. And so since I'm allergic to cats and can't have cats and also don't want them because we have a bunch of birds here, um, I thought, you know, I would trap them some years, but I wouldn't be super diligent about it and was just hoping that they'd kind of go away, you know, eventually. Um, and, you know, fast forward a few years now, and especially last year when we had huge snowpack for six months, um, they really did a significant amount of damage, uh, which was kind of hard after being here for 10 years. So if you do have pest issues, especially burrowing animals, um, get on top of them a little bit sooner is what I would recommend. Lesson number six is that I would actually use weed mat in the pathways. I know it's not super permaculture, but if you think about um, time, where you want to spend your time on your homestead, it isn't 
in weeding a pathway. You know, if you're going to weed, you should be weeding in your food forest, you should be weeding in your garden beds. Um, so I made that decision a couple years ago to actually get some heavy duty weed mat that's gonna last quite a while um, and use that in my pathways just to cut down on maintenance. You could also use um, sheets, you know, organic cotton sheets that you get at a thrift store or something like that. So that's a possibility as well, but something that will pretty um, consistently keep the weeds out is what I would recommend. Uh, so lesson number seven is I would put a gate that leads directly um, to my neighbors. Uh, and so we, when we got here early on, um, we didn't know our neighbor very well, but uh, we quickly got to know her. She would help with our chickens, I would help with her chickens. And although there is access, um, it would be much more convenient if we had a gate that went directly um, into her yard rather than having to walk all the way around. Um, and so that kind of also accomplishes that social permaculture piece of making connections and actually having this physical um, open connection that we can make with our neighbors. Um, so do think about that um, in your design if that's relevant. Uh, lesson number eight is I would get more consistent help sooner. Um, and you know, I always talk about this in your, the social systems design of your property. Agriculture was never meant to be an individual act. Um, it takes a lot of time and energy to grow your own food. Um, we were meant to do it communally, especially the planting and the harvest and the preservation. And so recognizing that you need help um, uh, is super important early on so that you don't get burned out um, and or you know walk away from this whole endeavor. So you know having work parties, having volunteer days, or um, you know if you can have an intern or use um, work away or willing workers on organic farms, all of those ways are, are, are um, strategies um, to get more consistent help. And or if you want to actually outright pay somebody um, to help you, that's great as well. Um, it's only been in this past couple of years where I've had like a consistent intern and I've noticed what a difference that makes for me uh, in terms of not feeling as tired uh, by the end of the season uh, and also giving um, someone an opportunity to learn um, from me as well and see, the, see this place through the growing season. So get more consistent help. Um, nine, lesson number nine is um, don't let <laughs> volunteer plants get out of control. Um, so early on, uh, I got a lot of volunteer sunflowers that came into the garden, volunteer borage, volunteer asters, and they're all great plants, right? They all have benefits, they're multifunctional plants, and I love them. But I think that I let them get a little out of control in certain contexts. And it's not that um, that can't be handled, um, but especially in the food forest, I think I wish I would have not let the asters get so out of control where now they add like an element of management um, to the system that I wouldn't have had had I been on top of it a little sooner. Um, so be mindful of volunteers and plant choices. Um, and um, like, for example, I put in a lot of black currants um, early on in my food forest. I thought they were one particular type of black currant, um, and they weren't. <laughs> and they're, they're okay, but they're not super tasty, and I feel like I dedicated too much of my food forest space to these black currants, and I probably would have put something different in. Uh, and then finally, uh, lesson number 10, my last lesson is to be less hard on yourself and to give yourself a little bit of grace. Um, this is not an easy task to choose to grow our own food or to have a homestead and to take on everything that's involved and to be, um, be don't be hard on yourself. Um, this whole implementation of a site design, uh, this, the, this whole relationship that you take 
um, to growing your own food. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, especially if you're in a cold climate. And so give yourself some grace. Um, the garden will be your best teacher. It will also test you and trigger you in all of the ways. It will trigger your fear of failure, uh, your perfectionism, uh, your need to do everything just so. And so to give yourself a little bit of grace and to be less hard on yourself is going to uh, help you in the long run and to help you be able to be doing this for years and years to come. So those are my top 10 lessons. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to put those in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.